make a brand element and a brand strategy. Okay? Brand elements and a brand strategy. Basically, on the brand strategy, you're going to say, is it going to be linked to strongly to uh, linked strongly to Hyundai or not? Okay? Are we going to have the endorsed brand strategy where it's independent? Or just have some brand where it's completely independent? Or are you going to be, on the other hand, a uh, sub-brand strategy where Hyundai is obvious in the customer's mind? Or a branded house strategy? So think about what is the objective of the brand? Is it to sell a lot of cars? Is it to improve the sales of other cars? Why, when you're thinking about the strategy you're going to use. Might be a different strategy than using Korea. <coughs> so, how much time do you need to, to finish this part? Have you already finished? <laughs> you have? Have you guys already made a name and a slogan and a logo? No? Not yet? What about you guys? Have you made a name, a slogan, and a logo? Also, how much time do you need to do that? We spent five or ten minutes in the last class already to discuss that. If you're in the company, you're going to have week, days or weeks, right? I'm just asking you to do it five or ten minutes. Just to give me an idea, right? So let's take five or ten minutes then to make the brand elements. Are you going to, you already have a name, a logo, and a slogan, right? So are you going to keep them the same, or are you going to change them? So can I see what you guys have done? <laughs> Is it name in Chinese or in English? in English. Are you going to write also in Chinese? So that's what they do in Korea. So if I see an Equus in Korea, I don't know it's from that. There's nothing written in the car, even on the advertising. Maybe I feel like in this case I don't have the Equus with Hyundai. But if we look at this here, we can see that the export market is very small. They're only selling. How many of these cars do you think they can sell in China? If they're, if they're only selling 250 in the other rest of the world, uh, the company that ballpark takes are open up, they can sell in China. So, one more question, right? So, do you think that this car would be uh, promoting the name of Hyundai as, a, as making their other cars look better? Basically, I just wrote the 
you can you write, can you add, write down here, like on the case you saw, the way you're going to write the name? And like the logo in like I said keep the logo. Chinese? Keep the But I mean, you know, the way it's written in English. Oh, You can't write Chinese characters. So it's like, so I think. So you can keep it the so can you should uh, draw something like this, right? Write something, but what way is it going to be? The name, and is there a Chinese name? If you can't do Chinese characters, you can just pretend. Make up your own Chinese characters. How is it going to look? Right? With the name and the logo. You can discuss now and tell me, but at the end you have to give me the case of the part three of the question number three, action point. Okay. You have to give me all of the case of the yourself. But just briefly, problem, information, and action point. So like this. Chinese name for memorability reason. Okay? 
But we should also have the English name. What is the advantage of the English name? So transfer transferability, right? We talked about transferability. So we can trans trans the name is being used in English in different countries, in Korea and other countries. So we can keep the note name in English, it's transferable, but we also need to put it in Chinese. Okay, the next group behind, what about the symbol? Do you like this V-shaped symbol or are you going to change it? Yes. Uh, we maintain emblem. Yes, why? Because uh, this emblem is symbol of the uh, echoes. We okay. not change it emblem. So the symbol is, uh, you think it's meaningful? What does it mean to you? When you see that, what does it mean to you? What do you feel? Luxury. Luxury. Elegance, right? Yeah. So yes, this is okay, right? They don't need to change the symbol. It means people can understand in China that this symbol also means elegant and unique, right? Is that true for Chinese students? This symbol is okay? Yeah. I don't think so. No? no. Does it mean elegant and unique to you? Of uh, course it's similar to the Rolls Royce. Too similar to Rolls Royce? Yeah. So you think it should be changed a little bit yeah. for uniqueness? It's not unique. <coughs> okay, then uh, the next group behind. Uh, what about the slogan? Two, three guys. What about the slogan? Do you want to keep the slogan or change the slogan? Are you going to write it in English or in Chinese? Chinese. Right in Chinese, are you going to keep the slogan a new era of excellence or are you going to change it? No, it, it may, maintain. Why? Um, keep it friendly for Chinese. <laughs> Which is more important, keeping the same name or keeping the same slogan? Same slogan. Try again. <laughs> <laughs> Which is more important when you're selling in another country? Keeping the same name or keeping the same slogan? Which do people know better, the slogan or the name? Name. Name. So we keep the same name, it's okay, right? We can change the slogan. So it's okay to change the slogan for something which is meaningful for Chinese people. Okay? A new era of excellence might work well in Korea. It might work well in China too. But we could find some Chinese phrase in the Chinese language, which might... Sometimes the phrase doesn't translate exactly, right? But we could find some phrase with slogan, which could be... In Chinese language, it's going to be more memorable and meaningful, right? So we can change the slogan. Then what about the strategy? So the two guys at the back. What strategy do you recommend? Strategy? Mm -hmm. How's it price? Yes, why? Uh, because this car is more luxurious than the other United products, so therefore we believe it should be advertised separately. Okay, so that's true. So Equus is totally different than the other brands of Hyundai. And it represents something different than the other cars. Yes, does anybody have a different idea? Equus, they said Equus is very different from the other brands of Hyundai, so it should have a completely separate brand. But does anybody have any different idea? There's other factors we have to consider here. So do you think that the master brand could be strengthened by being associated with the sub-brand? So do you think that Hyundai, yes. other brands could be made stronger because they are associated with the Equus car? What do you think? Yes or no? You said yes. Okay. Uh, yes, so for this reason, we can suggest to make a co-driver strategy in when we're doing Equus. So uh, the reason is that we're not going to sell many Equus cars in China, but we can use this as a way of improving the brand name of Hyundai. Uh, by selling a quality car like this, then more people might buy the Sonata. We saw the Sonata sells a lot. 
right? So in this case, if we look at the sales, there's so much inequality that we are going to make uh, the Equus equal brand. So Hyundai Equus is going to be clear in China. So if we go for the co-brand strategy, it means they're equal, Hyundai and Equus. We, we have some separate brand, but we want to use Equus to improve the image of Hyundai. We know we're not going to sell many Equus cars, but it's like a strategy to improve the image. So this is also a sales strategy. When you go to the car showroom, they always have a very expensive and luxurious car outside, which is a really expensive price. Probably you can't afford it, right? But then they think, it's like psychologically, if you see that car, then you think that this car quality is high or better, right? And then you think the other car is quite reasonable price because that car is so expensive. So you think, oh, the Sonata is quite cheap after all. It's just 20 million, whereas the Equus is 70 million. So, uh, do you have any other questions about this part? No? Do you know of any company that has a strategy of making just some small, very luxurious brand, and then they use that to sell a lot of cheap, brand, cheaper brands at the bottom. Can you think of any company like that? So we can see that some companies change now. We talked about the last time. If they first make a luxurious name, then later they can sell their mid-range products more easily. So perhaps, if Hyundai had first introduced the Equus to the Chinese market and then later introduced the other car, it might have worked a little bit better. Uh, what is the image of Hyundai now in China, Chinese students? What do Chinese people think of the brand name Hyundai? Don't know? I'm not really sure. So then we're going to talk about adapting the products and services for consumers and businesses. So how are we going to adapt the product for the market? So we have to think about three things. The market perceived quality, we talked about before, the function. People perceive a different function or different quality in different markets. Performance quality. For example, airlines. What do you think is the main main uh, quality in an airline. What what do you think is what makes a quality airline? Discuss with your partner. What is a quality what makes a quality airline for you? Discuss with your partner and then tell me. If you think about an airline, what is a quality airline? Okay, so are you guys here? What do you think? What's quality? If you think about an airline, what do you think is quality? Comfort of the seats. Yes, what do you guys think? Low accident rate. Low accident rate. For example, in Ireland, Ryanair is a big Irish company. But they just do the basic functions. They think quality for an airline is getting people there safely, getting them there on time, and getting their baggage there. Right? On time. So Ryanair, even though it's very cheap, has the best performance in Europe for being on time, for getting people's baggage there. Right? For low accidents. It focuses on those three things. But other airlines think, no, some customers don't think that this is quality in an airline. Other customers want the airline to be comfortable, right? They want to have good service from the air hostess, okay? They want to have other things. So they won't fly with Ryanair because the service is not good, okay? Because they don't have food on the flight. They don't give the, you have to pay for the food. So we can see that actually the performance of Ryanair is very good if we think about the function of an airline, right? But that's different than the market perceived quality. You can find people on the TV who make fun of Ryanair. 
Why? Because they say, oh, it's terrible, it's a terrible airline. Because their customer service is very bad, they're not friendly, okay? Their service is bad. So, again, that's a cultural difference between Ireland and Korea. I'm from Ireland, so I'm not worried about service. The service is very bad in Ireland. If you go to a restaurant, or if you go to the airline, people are, are not very friendly, they don't smile, they don't give a good service, right? People in Ireland are more worried about basic function. But if I come to Korea or the US, people are more worried about service. So we have to think about that when we are selling our product. What does the market think is quality about our product that we are selling our product in? Okay? Does the market want good service or do they want just need to focus on the basic function of the product? So airlines can be an example of that. People have a very different view about uh, what uh, the airline can be. So, just uh, the time is finished for today, but we, in the next class we will continue to discuss about this and how to adapt your product for the uh, different markets. So, also, unfortunately, uh,